place that law and our word there and Ruth showing what it was all about right there was for the Gentiles to come and help glean all 12 tribes. That Gentile is to reach out there and to bring back the lost of Israel back to their homeland. Chavrim, and um, I wanted to take a few minutes of your time uh, today. It's right after uh, the Christian holiday of Christmas, and I say that uh, also lightly. I realize there are some Christians that do not celebrate Christmas, but anyway, uh, season's greetings for those that do and for those that don't. Uh, God bless you. And there's something that uh, I'm beginning to work on, and I'm doing this mainly because I have had a lot of questions about when I speak of the Vatican and Edom and Mount Sier, etc., and the proof that this is actually speaking of the Vatican. And so I decided to take you guys into an in-depth study on this, and this is something we'll be working on over the next few days here. Hopefully have it ready for you sometime over the uh, weekend. And uh, But just want to share a few things with you about that before I get started. And by, and by the way, just for you, for those that, uh, that you might know, uh, in a video I did about Ezekiel where it talks about Mount Seir and Edom, um, Esau was actually given Mount Seir. And of course we get, uh, we get the information, or we realize that uh, that Edom is Esau because it means red. Uh, but anyhow, though, let me just share with you a few things, though, that to, to get you thinking about the news and stuff that you're seeing on television as well. For example, here in Time Magazine, uh, the Pope here, it says right here, the Pope for a New World, uh, if you can see that on the magazine there. Seeing all kinds of magazines come out here this year about this. Uh, another one that was interesting too, they have a, a painting that portrays uh, an image of Jesus and uh, says, who do you say that I am, is at the bottom of the magazine. All of the articles in here are about uh, the Catholic faith, uh, the holy sites, all of them Catholic uh, controlled holy sites, etc. throughout the entire magazine. Um, Another interesting one, another one by Life Magazine, and it has a picture uh, or a statue of Mary, and it says, Miracles, the presence of God in our lives. And it goes on to show many different places throughout history uh, where miracles that would take place and how that the Catholic people have faithfully come to these places in droves over the centuries and over the years, even in modern times, and just article after article after article, the entire magazine is devoted to this. Um, and you, it doesn't take a rocket scientist, all you have to do is look at the news, and we see every news broadcaster there is speaking about the Vatican and uh, the Pope, Pope Francis, what he's doing, how he's declaring peace, uh, all the different, as I've mentioned to you, the dignitaries that come from all over the world that go and speak to the Pope. 
uh, the Pope uh, pushing for not only a new world order, but a one world banking system that the Vatican would be the head of, a monetary system that they would control. Um, so I'm going to take you on a very interesting uh, journey through that. And uh, by the way, uh, and, uh, let's see, I think I've got that. I don't even think I have it up here. No, I don't have it up here. Uh, the book Israel, Are They Still God's People? is the first book I actually wrote. And you can find that on our website, IsraelReturns.com, in case you're interested in ordering a copy of that book. I go, I go very deep into the Vatican in there, the historical side of it, how we see who they are, um, how we see this in uh, uh, Daniel 9, 25 being the prince that shall come. But we're going to do a video tonight, or not tonight, but over the, over the next couple of days here, really detailing... Um, the truth and facts about the Vatican and their and their new rise to power, world dominance, and how this fits biblical prophecy. So, um, hope you will be tuning in and, and enjoy this segment as we put it together. Uh, also, another video I'd like to put out, a little short one here. Something I saw very interesting recently was uh, uh, e, uh, what is his name, Eon. Uh, Gosh, I forget his name now. McCormick, I believe, is his last name. He is a man that had a near-death experience. Actually, he was dead for 15 minutes clinically. Uh, I saw this on Alan Lamont's channel, video about this man. It really was a powerful testimony. I shared this on Facebook and on Google as well. Our Facebook, Stephen Denoon, um, is our Facebook page. And... It, it was a powerful testimony in itself because it made me think of the thief on the cross. A man that, when he was dying, had his only last opportunity to repent and how God pressed him to go to repentance. And he did so. And miraculously, he was saved and transformed by the power of Almighty God uh, just instantly in those last few minutes of his life and then got to go see the Lord Jesus face to face as well. I um, want to bring that out because it's really, I think it's an encouragement because many times we do not know what happens when a person is dying, what they're going through. And I could not help but think when I saw this video because he had the opportunity not to come back, but he couldn't do it to his mother the one who had prayed for him, the one that caused him to recognize when he was dying. And God had spoke to her audibly and said, pray for your son, Eon, he is dying. And when she went to her knees and prayed for him, it was because of her prayers that God began to deal with him. And just a marvelous story. It makes me think of the thief on the cross and how real that is. And so I'd like to bring out a video on that as well. I think that'd be a blessing to you. I'll share some clips from Eon's testimony that I, that I happened to catch. And from what I understand, in uh, this year, in 2014, in Australia and South Africa, there will be a movie released about his life and what happened to him. So very interesting. Anyway, God bless you. We thank you for all that you do for us, the support you're doing for us. And, uh, and I have been, by the way, I'm still in prayer as to the leading of God and how he plans for us to go and in which direction to lead us in so but I have you can't see this but I have a stack of uh, information here that will be needed for our passports um, I feel led to get everything in order as I'm praying about this and seeking God's perfect will uh, so I ask you to continue to pray for me it's a very serious time Israel's in a very serious condition and I feel like that the Lord would have us go there so but I need to know for sure from him. Anyway, God bless you. Thank you again for your kindness and the support you show to our ministry.